Welcome to the Neckbeard Experience. Today we have some stories crafted for you that I hope you enjoy. We've got medieval, MMO, and gatekeeping neckbeards. So without further ado, let's go. Hello, I'm one of the world's most mediocre Icelanders, and I do reenactments. How y'all doing? So my tale goes back in before the times of the plague. I'm located in Norway. I've been doing Viking and 15th century reenactments for a few years. The thing about Norway is that the Norskis don't do small talk with strangers. So me and my captain, recently married to her wife, we were walking around the market stalls. We were talking to the nice Polish smiths who were making lovely belt buckles and decorative studs. As she was talking about a lovely buckle that she wanted for her belt, I spot him. My very first neckbeard. He had a big old jiggly belly. A patchy ginger neckbeard. But his biggest sin was his clothes. On sight, you try to be as historically accurate as possible. So wool clothes and linen. He, on the other hand, was wearing all cotton crusader clothes and he beelines it towards me and captain and he goes hey you look stunning in those clothes she feeling a bit awkward as norwegians do when they're approached by strangers she says thanks before going back to the buckles yeah you're very beautiful who are you and what group are you with you alone she's looking more confused so I jump in, and I say with a chirpy tone, Hello, I'm the world's most mediocre Icelander, sergeant of the group, and this is my captain. How can I help you today? He now glares at me, before looking back at captain. Leaning into her, he says, You're a stunningly beautiful woman. You'll make someone very happy one day. She cocks an eyebrow. Yeah, thanks. I made my wife happy. His smile leaves his face before walking away. He ends up spanking another girl on her backside and getting told off. My captain looks at me and says, You know him? I simply say, No, he was just hitting on you. Captain, that was a neckbeard. My captain looks at me and says, I don't understand those weirdos. Well, that's our camp stories that we tell around the campfire. I made a reddit, like many other victims, that had interacted with the unfortunate predators that are neckbeards, I had to change, delete, and completely take down a lot of my social media accounts. That way I can avoid this neckbeard from him trying to further contact me. I know he's still out there, and he probably found another victim to latch onto. Hopefully Blizzard bans him. I'll start by saying, I encountered this neckbeard on World of Warcraft, and it made me so severely uncomfortable because he became an extreme predator and I had to change servers, delete, or even hide all of my social media, only to find out he's a repeat offender, and I'm not the only victim. Okay, now that that's out of the way, I know, neckbeards and wow are synonymous, I get that. Doesn't mean that there aren't people out there that are still attached to reality, and know that stalking is bad. So into the details. I've been playing World of Warcraft since vanilla, to now with Shadowlands. I am an active player, and I play on the Alliance side. I enjoy my time playing and hanging out with friends, writing, creating stories, all the nerdy enjoyment that WoW has to offer. When I encountered this neckbeard, it was when I was a part of the Emerald Dream Realm. Emerald Dream is an RP server, kind of like Moonguard and Wormrest Accord and Argent Dawn. On RP servers, you make a character, then you create a backstory, who they are, and then write stories with others. It's fun. I like it. Okay, cool. Now onto the story. The timeline of this was during the past summer when COVID caused my state to lock down and I had to work from home. At this time, I was still on the server Emerald Dream. I was in the process of going through the grind of preparing my Resto Druid Night Elf for eventually going on a raid. Well, at this point, it was before Shadowlands. It was the battle for Azeroth and eventually I was gonna get into the Nazoth raid. I hated that patch. The story was cool and the rest of it was stupid. While I was doing this, I was also looking for an RP guild that was active and had people that seemed cool. That's when I ran into Neckbeard's guild. I was accepted instantly, which truly is no problem, and they had a Facebook page. 
a website that has guild lore and stories. Overall, I was cool with this. I appreciated the guild moderator showing such interest and passion towards their guild and what they did. At first, everything seemed chill. People greeted you, they asked how you were doing, etc. That was until the GM realized that I, the person behind the Druid Night Elf, was a woman. Oh gee, a woman in my guild. One that is playing a tantalizing Kaldori Druid? This is love at first sight. Or some bullcrap like that. My spidey senses started to go off when the GM messaged me the instant that I joined the guild. Your character is beautiful. And if a lady should require assistance, I shall be there to rescue you. Uh, okay. Might as well as tipped a fedora and wheezed out, My lady. But whatever. Then I went back to my quest grinding so I could level up my gear and go do some raiding. Generally, you would think that my response to his chivalrous offer would have dissuaded him from continuing, but sadly, the hope that he would stop did not happen. He, in fact, felt empowered to continue. Looking back at this, I should have told him to F off, but I didn't. But I can't change the past. Days after it was almost instantaneous that the moment that I logged on, wishing nothing more than to game and explore and do the things I like, I get a message. The message is usually said, Hi, how are you doing today? Eh, no big deal. I was friendly, and I told him the usual. Doing alright, enjoying my coffee, healing Azeroth and her wounds, cause that's all Magni does now. And general crap like that. The usual sign of dismissing the conversation, and wanting to go on questing, and to be left alone. But no, I'd never been left alone sadly, because he would find me in game. He would often be outside the areas I was trying to grind for gear, or questing. He'd always be quick to swoop down with his character, and would emote bowing, blushing, blowing a kiss, always saying how beautiful my character was, and so on. I noticed this quickly, and I should have said something, but I chose to ignore him, and to ignore his actions. His actions increased when he noticed any male character who thanked me. This was usually after I would see some random player low on health and I would heal them or help them kill a mob or a world boss. But after such actions, my GM would message me and say something like, He doesn't appreciate your efforts. He doesn't know how to appreciate such a rare beauty as you. Don't trust him. He will ruin your untouched flower. Messages like that would be left ignored and always closed down instantly when they popped up. I figured that if I gave it any attention, it would only encourage his terrible behavior. Sadly enough, his behavior would have been encouraged if I stayed silent or said anything. He's just that sort of person. My silence to him must have meant that I was being coy and hard to get. A night of druid? Not falling for a stereotypical Scarlet Crusader human paladin? We were destined to be. Or some crap like that was in his mind. Again, I would get whispers each hour to a half an hour asking how the lady was. And if I was thinking about him, I wouldn't respond because I didn't want to. I didn't owe him a response. So onward I went. And my GM neckbeard followed me to each area, keeping a close eye on his beloved because no one has the right to ruin his untouched flower. I literally hate myself for typing that. But those are his words. Days went by and it only became worse. This neckbeard went on to try to protect me from any foul, unsaintly Chad, to becoming predatory and quickly sexual. Again, I am a female gamer. The guild knew I was, and everyone else in the guild did not care. But no, my GM neckbeard had found his true love, apparently. He would ask me stuff like, So, what do you look like? Are you young? Innocent? Are you pure? I did not really tell him much, <sighs> I'm an adult woman, and I'm trying to game. This never stopped this neckbeard. From there, he went on to tell me stuff like, I'm the most powerful paladin there is! To, You should have your characters wear short skirts. An outfit set would present yourself to me. You should do the same in real life, so you're a proper woman. If you're to be my true love, you're not to wear any panties around me. And I would put a collar and a leash on you at all times. I must state this clearly. First and foremost, never once did I tell this neckbeard that I was single or that I was interested in a relationship. Never did I once flirt with him or put any notion out 
that I was interested. He took that by me being a woman playing World of Warcraft clearly meant that we're supposed to be together. He would see to it that it came true. When this started to happen, he became very predatory with his sexual nature. That's when I started to voice my discomfort. I am not looking for romance. I wish you the best in your love life, but I will not be for you. However, to him, all the words that I said was clearly the sign that the woman was trying to play hard to get and that I had become a quest objective. Although every time I brought this up, he would respond with the following. But you're beautiful. You're, you're so very kind. No one's ever been so kind to me as you have. If we weren't meant to be, then why did you join my guild? That's clearly a sign. I'm a strong man, like Varian Wren. I even have long hair like he does. And I've got big hands to hold you and to please you. Okay, Varian Wren is dead. So, yes, you're about as manly as him. You clearly haven't been with someone who knows how to leave you trembling. Don't worry, I'll be gentle. The straw that really broke the camel's back is when I received a notification on my phone. I went to look at it and I saw that the message request was on Instagram. My former GM had managed to find me on Instagram and now knows what I look like. Knew my personal work information as my Instagram was used for work had my phone number on it. Well, this scared me. In game and out of game, he now had my social media. He went to all links to remind me. Such a shame you're not younger. You look sexy as a blonde and much more innocent if you dyed your hair lighter. Come be my blood elf. I'll treat you right. When this happened, I told my friend on Discord about this. About the same time, she had been looking to try to find a server that was more LGBTQT friendly. She asked if I wanted to come along. I agreed I would. She didn't want to go to a new server alone and I wanted to get the hell out of that guild. This became my ticket out. When it was decided that I would leave, I also decided that at the same time, I would change servers. And those who don't know, if you want to transfer servers on WoW, you have to pay money. Well, I did without hesitation. After all, why should I delete my character that I spent so many hard hours working on and start over on a different server? So I did, and it didn't take long for my GM to notice that I had left the guild and he inquired why. My friend, who is part of the LGBTQT community, is transferring servers, and she wanted me to go with her so she wasn't alone. I told her I would. Oh boy. I wish I would have had a screenshot of the tirade he went on, but I didn't. But I still remember a good chunk of it, though. These actions are infuriating. She's going to take away my untouched flower. I hope and can't wait till you come crawling back. You are going to fail. Your friend is leading you down an unholy path. I don't like it when LGBTQT people shove their lifestyle down your throat. You regret what you're doing. I'm disappointed in you. You turned out just to be another slut. But don't worry. I'm going to find you. And I'm going to save you from yourself. No matter how much you try to hide, I'll be there. When I read that, I recalled sitting back in my chair and staring at the screen. My GM had my social media accounts. He knew what I looked like, he had my phone number, and he was relentless during that time leading up to that moment to ensure that I would be his, that I would be his untouched flower, and that I would wear a collar and a leash for him and be a good woman. If you block me in real life, I'll make a character on every server so I can find you. You'll never be without me. When that happened, I blocked him. I took down my Instagram, I changed my name on Facebook. I made sure to scrub as many images of myself from the internet. It left me feeling vulnerable that that could happen. After all, it started out with him singling me out and wow. The instant that I joined his guild and he found out that I was a chick. Then it went so far as him being able to find my social media accounts and finding out who I was out of character. What would stop him from trying to find me in real life? At that time, it was simple. Become invisible. Change server realms. So I did. I made a different character name. I turned her into a different character. That way he couldn't hunt me down. I do not regret doing what I did and blocking him and paying money to transfer my character. Why should he chase me from my game that I love and that I have made so many friends over the years? For a while, it was quiet. I joined a new guild. I gained new friends made new characters, found a measure of peace. Sadly though, the GM Neckbeard is still out there, 
lurking in the shadows. Twice since that unfortunate time, I have had a couple of message requests on social media where he had found me. He always ends up being blocked when I realize it was him, and that I don't want any contact with him. In that time, I have also found out that I'm not the only victim of his. My former GM has a history of targeting female WoW players. He also has a history of approaching teenagers and becoming sexually aggressive. His history dates back to being chased from servers. He was blacklisted from many players' lives and guilds. The unfortunate thing, I know he's still out there. There are screenshots that exist on the internet from other victims showing his terrible behavior. Yet he defends himself and he blames his victims for his actions, including the children that he goes after for being a sexual predator. Through this subreddit, I learned that I possibly classify as beard bait. I'm a game developer, visual effects artist. I love cartoons and anime. I've been casually playing D&D, and I count myself blessed that I haven't dealt with any nasty scenarios that some other poor souls had with the game. I've also picked up the hobby of cosplaying. It's been a great way to challenge myself with fashion and the use of makeup and hairstyling. With all that listed above, and me being a woman in the industry dominated by men, it is fair to say that I am a target of many hot and bothered or hot-headed neckbeards. I'm still a rookie with dating and relationships, but my first dating experience was more or less unsavory. I use a lot of the things that happened to learn and grow from, and now I know better about particular red flags and want to avoid. Back then though, I didn't know better. This took place in summer. I had not been dating or in any relationship at this point. Relationships at my grade school days had a flair for the dramatic. And the men in high school were going through that duck dynasty phase, which didn't interest me at all. Well, mess up number one. I had a plenty of fish account and I lived in a retirement community. I was bored out of my mind. It was either that or jump in the canal, which is my backyard, and become buddies with the gators. Looking back, that would have been a better option. Now, due to it being a free platform, there was no shortage of freaks and creeps. And with the gamer artist profile, I was getting the more obscure ones. One of them actually managed to break through and asked me out on a date. The only difference between this man and the others is that he didn't open up with, I'm a nice guy, or does the carpets match the drapes? My standards were that low back then. I agreed to let him take me out for dinner. We go to a local tiki bar that's by the beach. He arrived in his truck and he actually had a large white teddy bear as a gift for me. He was fairly attractive, a solid 7 out of 10, well in Florida standards. He was by no means gussied up, and in my defense, I wasn't much of a looker myself. We get sat down at the table, and the red flag waving commences. Usually when my date learns that I am a game developer, the dreaded question comes up. What games do you play? On one hand, I hate being asked that question. Because as a girl, there's no right answer to it. On the other hand though, there is nothing more revealing in a man than his taste in games. Sure enough, the question comes up. Let's call this Charmer Gatebeard. So, what games do you play? I've actually been into horror games lately. Oh really? What kind? Well, I was enjoying Outlast and the Outlast Whistleblower. But since I don't have a PC fit for gaming anymore, I enjoy games that are more comfortable on laptop builds. I really enjoy Don't Starve and Oxygen Not Included. What kind of game art student doesn't have a PC to play real games on? A broke one. Money's kind of tight right now with tuition. Do you have a console? An Xbox 360. Well, when you find some money and you want to play a real horror game, you should play Dark Souls. Have you ever heard of it? Yeah, I've heard of it. Gatebeard then proceeds to explain Dark Souls to me, despite me telling him that I already knew it and that I was familiar with it. He additionally boasted about how he was. I'm a real MLG pro. I've got refined taste in video games. I know how to tell if they're good or bad. The ones that actually require skill to play. Can you guess what he played? Yep, Call of Duty. To which I also had another dose of mansplaining on the rootin' tootin' shootin' game. And how is the only real game that's left out there these days. This red flag should have been big enough, where nowadays I probably wouldn't have finished my mill. However, I was just happy that someone was remotely interested in me enough to take me on a date. I could swallow my pride back then, even though I really shouldn't have. The dinner followed by a walk on the beach. 
He was sharing some nice compliments, to which I mutually said he was adorable. Then I got this reaction. Don't do that. Do what? That. Call a guy cute or adorable? Men don't like being called that. Men are not cute. This should have been another red flag, but as you might have caught on by now, I am a certified social d The date ended with a kiss, which that in itself, well, it's not bad, and he dropped me off at home, but not before he managed to milk a second date out of me, and even more red flags, and he thought it was only fair to tell me, Oh, by the way, I'm allergic to latex. And I told him, <laughs> Great, thanks for sharing that. Don't know what the hell that has to do with me. I had made it clear that I was not looking for a hookup, and I thought like any normal human being, that he would respect that. However, along with saying stuff like that, he reminded me a few more times along with saying stuff like, Tell me you're mine. And more eerie things like that. The second date was rather uneventful. We went to go see a movie. Warcraft was in theaters at the time. The worst thing he did was try to grope my chest. But when I told him to stop, he did. I think he was starting to catch on that he wasn't going to get what he was hunting for. So a day before what was planned to be a third date, he pulls this gem of a situation out of his butt. This conversation took place over the span of one day. Hey man, how's your day going? Not good. My dog died this morning. Oh no, I'm so sorry, are you okay? I'll be fine, just gotta get myself to work. Three hours later, I lost my job. Really? How did that happen? I got into a fight with my boss. He said some nasty stuff about my dog being dead. Two hours later, I lost my house. Mind you, he lives with his parents. What happened now? Dad got pissed that I lost my job, so I got into a fight with him. Two fights in one day. Yeah, I've lost everything. I'm really sorry, man. You're in my thoughts. Is there anything I can do? Let me know. Well, I'm actually going to be crashing at my friend's house for a while. It's a really nice flat. You maybe want to come over and spend the weekend? Uh, I'm not super comfortable staying overnight with someone I hardly know, Chief. Please? I really need you. You're all I got now. We can just watch movies and cuddle. Nothing freaky, I promise. Sounds fun, right? Uh, I'm sorry, GP. That's just a little too much for me. I'm not okay with it. Needless to say, I did not hear back from him. He was supposed to pick me up for our third date, but instead of that, he blocked me on all social media without any explanation whatsoever. I actually cried over him, which I mean, in my defense, it was my first real date. So of course, I was a little upset. Nowadays, I know my own worth. And thanks to story sharing places like this and the lovely storytellers on other platforms, I know what to avoid or take caution in. I recently got out of a relationship where my ex and I, we still remain friends. No bad reason. Why we broke up was because he had a huge opportunity with a career and I couldn't go with him sadly. So for now, I'm taking more time to learn and grow before jumping back into the dating pool. Thank you all very much for joining me for this edition of the Neckbeard Experience. Yeah, I used to play WoW. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of taking a break from it right now. I've played since vanilla and I've taken breaks on and off. I've pretty much played every expansion up till now. I just got other things to do, so... Plus, my wife is usually my playing buddy, and she's not too interested in playing it anymore. Oh well. I've only dealt with neckbeards in passing in the game. I haven't really had that much of a bad experience. Although I'm not a girl, so I don't think I'm gonna bring out the neckbeard in people. At least not their full extent. It's a fun game. I also played a Resto Druid too, so I thoroughly enjoyed Resto Druid. And to tell you the truth, if I played again, I'd probably go right back to Resto Druid. Again, thank you for listening. I want to give a special thanks to my patrons. Your help is greatly appreciated. And until next time, this is Dallas, signing off. Y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs>